Hello, my name is John Spangle, and welcome to, uh, to my YouTube channel, Underground, where I titled it Underground. I was thinking about the underground church in present-day China and Iran, where that pouring the Spirit, Holy Spirit just growing uh, the kingdom of, of God under a great uh, pr uh, persecution tribulation, if I get the words out there. Uh, we're not here for the seven-year tribulation. I'm about to read that to you, but... Uh, We've always been, the church, body of Christ, has always been under persecution tribulation since the beginning. I titled this, Holy Spirit is Raptured Up, uh, meaning during the pre-tribulation rapture, we are taken up. And because of that, the Holy Spirit is, uh, for a period of time, off this earth, but not totally. It, I'll show you in scriptures where during a time, there's no Holy Spirit on this earth. And at a time, uh, the gifts of the Spirit will come back. But I started out talking about the church age. The church is not purified by enduring the seven-year tribulation. Jewish people are. That's Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 through 27. The church is uh, purified solely by the complete work of Jesus Christ on the cross, as John 17, uh, verses 1 through 26. The church being in the gift of grace only, and not the Jewish people who face being martyred to be with God unless they come to endure the end of the seven-year tribulation. That's my uh, my statement for most of my videos now that I make that the church, we're about to go up. How we know we're in that season. Uh, a lot of people aren't con saying Israel's in the Psalm 83 war. Uh, some people don't even call it a war. They call it a, a, an action. But it, it's a war. They're, they're in the Psalm 83 war from what I see from my understanding of Scripture. It started 7 October 2023. It's all part of it. Uh, people, a lot of people... They don't, you know, I was listening to one person on another channel talking about how they're, you know, not in the war and this and that. They don't understand, uh, they don't understand the Middle East and they don't understand what war is about. Uh, I spent 21 years of my, my life in the United States military, two branches of service. And, and I spent many times overseas, in South Pacific and Middle East. So there's a lot involved. There's a lot going on. And yes, Israel has, has, been in, they've been fighting uh, for many years, but I mean, they've really been in the war since October of last year. And they're in a war now. It's just escalating and bits and pieces to it. So the world's coming against Israel. We understand that, and that's the way it's going to be. Before this war is over, we'll be gone. And then as soon as we go up, we hear Israel say peace and safety. There's some point in this, this war that they're in that's going to be, they think they're going to be safe. And then uh, we'll go up, and then it's going to escalate even more. For the first time, Iran had attack with uh, like 300. Of course, there are different types of drones and missiles and everything. The reason they did the different ones that they were seeing, they were testing what could go through their defenses. I guarantee if, if one of them really got through their defense, they'd be hitting them again with that type, whatever it was, cruise missile or the, the, the drones or whatever. If they really got through their defense, they they hit them with everything they got. I understand there's enough rockets and Hezbollah alone to to almost totally wipe out Israel. So it has nothing to do with, I meant they're a proxy of Iraq. I mean, I'm sorry, Iran. But as you see, Iran, when they came over, over the weekend with stuff, they knew ahead of time. So that's what people don't understand. That's just why Iran mainly attacks by proxies because everything's right there around the border area compared to spending time to come over. So that's when they built stuff up and they're building rockets up and have been for years. So there's a lot going on. It's, it's, it's uh, not just a physical war, but it's a spiritual war. And we're seeing things as they play out. But let's, let's talk about where we're at with Israel and where we're located uh, in, in scriptures. And then I'll be explaining more about the Holy Spirit uh, as I titled it. Holy Spirit is raptured up being in the pre-tribulation rapture. Now, to get a quick understanding, uh, some people do not understand, there's many raptures in the Bible. Uh, a lot of times people are ignorant, uh, and that's not disrespectful. They've been taught things wrong. They don't understand. There's many raptures. Uh, I did a video a while back. I used to add the uh, this rapture info page I have of my notes. I used to add that to every channel. But that's like 20 minutes added on every video. So sometimes I'll throw, them at, I'll throw it on there for people uh, to get here, but sometimes I'm not going to do it on every video. You can only go so much with information. You keep throwing it at people and throwing it at people. And they don't, they don't, some of those won't see it. I had a man comment in my last video getting at me and he wouldn't listen to it after the uh, four, four minutes of the video. 
Then I had a, a and that was titled Pre-Tribulation Rapture Saints, A Few Chosen. So instead of really getting into it, he, he made comments against me. But instead of listening to the video and seeing where I show in scriptures, so that person's not going to learn anything. I had one other person, I think I titled the video something like Pre-Tribulation Rapture Live, because I hear that a lot from people. So I wanted to do a video about that from that statement and give scripture where it shows that it's not a lie. And that person uh, <clears throat> left a comment, and I said, uh, and someone else commented on that, and I, I left a comment back to him saying, you, you misunderstand, you, the title was kind of misleading. And he's like, oh, you did it to fool people. And I really didn't. I was like, I meant a comment. I did it because I was thinking of the statement I hear so much that it being a lie. So I did a video about it. So I didn't mean to catch anybody off guard. So some people are quick to, it's like a statement I always said, a uh, hundred men read the Bible. One man under, totally understands it. And 99 judging. And that's the way you have with people. There are many raptures in the scripture. So the viewpoint of just one rapture is, is incorrect. There's more than one rapture, and we have more than one rapture that's going to take place in the future. The near future is the pre-tribulation rapture. Then mid-tribulation will be the rapture of the two witnesses. That's Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 through 12. Lie dead in the street three and a half days, caught up. Uh, I mean, come back to life, and God says, come up hither. At the end of the seven-year tribulation, people don't understand there's two more raptures. As the raptures of the martyred saints, that's Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 through 16. As we come down with Jesus Christ, the bodies will go up because the souls that were in the altar of the martyred saints are coming down with us. They get their glorified body. And then when we come to Armageddon, yes, there's a battle going on. It will be stopped quick. And at that point, there'll be a rapture at the end of that. And that will be Revelation chapter 14, verses 17 through 20. Uh, referred to in Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30. The wheats and tares judgment, that takes place then. Uh Jesus will bring out his sin house uh, uh, angels to bring it, everybody in. Talks about the harvest with the sickle bringing in the, uh, and to the wine press uh, uh, the wrath of God. But uh, just like Philip, Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40 is a good example where as uh, soon as he, he, was, he baptized the Ethiopian official, he was caught up in spirit from one location at work to another. And so all the Armageddon. Uh, people will come worldwide Armageddon. They're not all coming to that war, people. I'm at that battle. There, there's still people that be in remote areas on the earth that are that have survived that will be brought there. They'll be raptured there. Uh, people get hung up about the word rapture. It's not in the Bible. The context is there. Uh, understand the Bible was written in Greek, old Greek, former Greek, colon Greek. And the original words harpazo means snatching away or caught up. Where we get the Latin word rapture, rapture, where we get the English word made up rapture, which is the, the uh, meaning of state of or experience of being carried away or transported from one location to another. Like I said, there's don't have, necessarily have to be up to heaven. It could be from one location to another on earth, or it can be the dead rising up because it's a physical or spiritual. Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 5, that happened to him, where he didn't know if he was in the, in the body or out of the body. He refers to it twice being caught up to heaven for what? For for instructions from God. So there's a lot there. And yes, someone said, well, if you go before God, you can't as a sinner. Absolutely. That's how we know Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. A lot of people say it's a vision. But in, in when Isaiah talks about that, he's in the presence of God. He says, woe, I am doomed, as in the Hebrew, uh, New, uh, Old Testament being in Hebrew, uh, that what it referred to was him being doomed because he was a sinful man. And he come from uh, unclean lips and he was from a people of unclean lips. So he was going to be, he was doomed. He was going to be destroyed. He was in front of God. But the seraphim flew over to uh, the altar with the tongue, picked up the a lump of coal and put it on his lips and said that it pured your iniquities and your sins are pure, uh, purged. So they had a, Pur him, uh, purge him of sin so he can get instruction for God. And right after that, God gives him instruction. So it's just understanding the word more. That's what the Holy Ghost is all about. That's why I made this video. That's why it's so important that to uh, give understanding what's going to take place in the near future when we go up and why it's important to understand that the body of Christ will be gone for a reason. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1-17. through 17. 
Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word, by letter as from us, as the day of the Lord is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there came a fall away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now a lot of people want to argue about this falling away. Uh, then there you go with discernment and then scholars back and forth on this. Many say this is uh, uh, referred to as uh, uh, a rapture, and, but most say it's just apostasia, uh, which is apostasy, which I'm about to give you in a moment. Another way is the falling away of the teaching. What I tell people is if it's a falling away of the teaching, then why, how's that keeping the Antichrist from being revealed? I mean, people, we're as far as we're going to get from teaching correct teachings now and sound doctrine. I mean, you had a, a female pastor, which there should never be a female pastor, according to the scriptures, kick a Bible in a mega church like a football back in January, January, February. So it's like we're, we're so far from being correct in, in these men's churches and religions. Uh, they, they, they just, it's apostasia right now. But I want to put in here a note, the meaning of apostasy or apostasia, which is the uh, original Greek word. The word apostasy is only used two times in the New Testament. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, which I just read to you, is one of them. The other is in Acts chapter 21, verse 21, where there is a reference to Jews forsaking the teaching of Moses. The word apostasia is translated forsaking there. An interest in 1 Timothy Chapter 4, verse 1, where the very words appear in the latter time, some will depart from the faith. The word apostasy is not used. Also in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 6, where it says, if they fall away, a different word is used. My point is this, the word apostasy it does not necessarily mean a falling away from the faith. That is why Miles Coverdell, Tyndale, and the translators of the Geneva Bible simply translated as a departure in leaving or rapture. They meant a departure in the 1560 edition, the Geneva Bible. They meant a parting or a departure away, not from teachings, but referring to as being raptured up. That, a lot of people uh, oppose that. But you have to go by the context. As I say, what's what's not teaching correctly have to do with holding the Antichrist back? Nothing. But the indwelling body of Christ, the born again, we have to go up. And I'm going to explain why. Who opposes and exalted himself, let's talk about the Antichrist, and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, yet with you, I told you these things. It's a letter to the uh, Thessalonians. He'd already taught this before. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Acts, notice it's he, as in uh, uh, like a noun or a person. If I do that correctly, I know someone's going to argue about my English. For the mystery and iniquity both do other work, and only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. This is talking about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceitfulness and unrighteousness and in that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in the right and unrighteousness. Let me stop there, reread this, these three verses. And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, these people are perished because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. What is the truth? The truth is the gospel. These people did not accept the gospel. And also, I believe that's pre-tribulation rapture. How can you say such a thing? Because the Left Behind series and books are fiction. Uh, fiction. I'm against that. I've been against it in all my videos. So many people are misled by Tim Lahane and Jenkins. They misled so many people, and they will answer to God for what they've done. Fiction. People think that, oh, many are going to go up. They think, well, once the rapture takes place, people will understand. And because of the rapture, they'll come to know things. Absolutely not. God shall send them strong delusion. What's he's deluding? 
from the rapture. So they, they'll believe a lie. So they're damned afterwards. Matthew 20, chapter 25, verse 1 through 13, Jesus Christ talks about the parable of ten virgins. Five wise, five foolish. Five wise brought uh, vessels full of oil for the lamps. Five foolish did. And when the bridegroom tarried, they all fell asleep. And then they heard an announcement, the bridegroom cometh. And so they all trimmed, their, all the virgins trimmed their lamps. And the five wise didn't have enough oil, so they had, give us of your oil. And the five, I meant five foolish didn't have enough oil. The five wise said, uh, we don't have enough for you both. Go to the market. So as they went to the market, the bridegroom showed up. The five wise got to go in. The five foolish showed up later. Did they get to go in? No. They weren't allowed in. That represents worldly Christians. Yes, a person can go to a church and think they're born again. This is where I get a lot of arguments. Well, that's not, is it? They don't take, you, you, you just live by faith. Exactly. There, there's many people that start out thinking they're living by faith, but they don't. Uh, Jesus talks about that in parables. About the uh, uh, sower, the uh, parable of the, the sower, where you know, depending on where the seed was on rocky ground, a good soil, and things like that. Uh, some people will just seem to have the faith for a period of time. Then when they go through their trials and tribulations, they lose out on everything. Satan grabs the others because they didn't have enough, enough into the sound doctrine. You know, there's, there's many things there. And I get many people mad at me and aggravated. That's fine. Let them be. Uh, this, this is for edifying the body of Christ. I do these videos to, to warn people. I do these videos for correction. I tell people to take what I say and look on your own with discernment. And I, I many times I say I could err, but I'm not going to go out there and, and certain things and go totally, you know, I, I'm steadfast in what I believe. That is being obedient to God. That's why I make these videos. I'm not a, a popular person. I mean, yes, the, the channel is growing, uh, but the more videos I print out, the more hatred I get, and uh, many times. And I used to just take out a lot of the hatred videos, and I just delete and just leave a few there, take some out. Now I just I just stop deleting everything, and just everything's there for you to see. I mean, I try to talk to some people and show things through scripture, but if they're you have to be careful because people try to bait you, and that's where I have to be careful. Is because I, I want to help. I don't want to just get an argument because no one wins an argument, and they have their ideas and stuff like that. Some people will come here and think they they just know it all. I don't say I know it all, but I I do know some things, and I show what what I believe the Holy Spirit shows me through the Scripture, and that's what this is all about. We are in those moments of deception, great deception right now. So many are deceived, and God will bring people here for understanding, and then. Satan's going to bring people here to attack. That's that's the truth of it. But many are damned. They're they're not. If at the moment, if you've heard the gospel and accept it, you know you become born again. Uh, they receive the salvation. Admit you are a sinner. Believe Jesus Christ died and rose again to pay for your sins. Confess Jesus as Lord of your life, putting your total trust in Jesus, your only hope for salvation. That's it. Your faith in, in Jesus Christ, yes. And this is where people argue with me. They're like, well, how can you say if they don't believe in pre-tribulation rapture, they're damned? Because those born again, if you just become born again, they 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 have milk. They are innocent. They they go up. All right. This is, is for those of the meat in Scripture. Those that that's born again, because there's a growth time. You just become a new Christian, like my son just became born again. December of last year. So we have our daily Bible study. He's learning. There's so much he's learning. He's picking up a little at a time. Uh, there's, it's a time. It's like an emphasy. You know, then later, you know, more adult. Uh, meet, meet, uh, talks about meeting the scripture. So at that point, I'm, that's the ones I'm referring to. Those that have understanding. Enough in the scripture. If they're truly born again, God will lead them to correct teaching. Or... You know, if they're going to a church that's incorrect teaching, once they get that maturity, they're not going to stay there because they're going to be in the scripture with the Holy Ghost and, and it's going to guide them. 
they're going to understand this. I shouldn't be here and leave. I know many people have left different types of churches and stuff because of incorrect teaching once they got to a point of understanding. So, but many are too wrapped up into this world. They're so wor worried about the worldly, like Lot's wife. You know, when Lot, they, she was too wrapped up in her, her life and the world there. And she grew up in Sodom. That's where Lot met her. He wasn't from there. He moved there and met her and married her there. And they had many children. Uh, you know, they had two daughters that came out with them. But he, he uh, the night before, talked to his sons-in-laws. So we don't know how many there was. There's plural, so there's at least two. So that's at least two son-in-laws and two daughters because those two daughters didn't come with him. Uh, it was two, two daughters that were not married. Never been with the men. So they, they left family back here, and she yearned for that family, and it cost her her life. Jesus Christ says, I come to separate families. When it comes to salvation and spiritual matters, I, I, I quote that all the time, but I just did, gave that video the other day, read it exactly where he, he talks about it. We're uh, three against two and two against three. We're father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He's not come to bring families together. He's come to separate it. And people get misunderstanding. He's all about love. Absolutely, he's all about love. He's the greatest. He has suffered so much, he didn't have to suffer for us. And we are to love him. And because of the love he indwells in us, the Holy Spirit, and we have great love for each other and take care of each other. And we build the kingdom up. That's what we're supposed to be doing, building God's kingdom. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Jesus Christ. Now we're, you have to accept the gospel. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or by epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation, and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. Now, I understand because I know someone's going to say, wait a minute now. Now you're saying, yes, I'm going to read later. I'm going to show you in Revelations where there's a great number that comes out of tribulation. Yes, those will be the Jewish people who eyes at the, the uh, curse was lifted off and they come to understanding. And there's many Gentiles that not heard the gospel that will come out of seven new tribulations saved. But when I talk about those damned, God sends strong delusion, that's those that have heard the gospel and not accept it. They don't get a second chance after that. Many times when God does judgment, he gets judgment. Remember the first time God did judgment on the world, only eight people got on the ark out of billions. So have an understanding of that. You know, people people just don't, they, they, they look at people and, and don't, comprehend because they're thinking of the flesh of someone they love or know care about you know well that person's not going to go to hell you know and they don't want to see that that's the flesh that's not the reality and spirituality of god the reason for the holy spirit is stated by jesus john chapter 16 7 through 15 nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not me. I'm righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of the world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he had the spirit of truth to come, he would guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear that he shall speak, and he shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that are the Father hath are mine, and therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. So the Holy Spirit is our guide through the Scriptures, giving us discernment and understanding. Now there comes a time after we go up, like I said, the Holy Spirit is missing on the earth. I'm going to read about uh, what described to us in Proverbs about lack of wisdom. And then I'm going to read about the, uh, I'm going to get more into the reason for the seven-year tribulation. Uh, some ministry that Joel has saw for the end times. And then I'm going to get into 
the time when there's a time on earth where there's no Holy Spirit at all. It's a short limited time, and I'll, I'll show you in the scriptures. So to give understanding, uh, the, the this causes a lack of wisdom. Proverbs 1, 20 through 33. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye live simplicity? And the scorners delight in the scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my report, reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make my words unto you. Because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regardeth. But ye have set out not all of my counsel, and would not of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they had hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They were none of my counsel. They would despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be fulfilled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearken unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. That's talking about the wisdom of the end times. Uh, man's going to be looking to his own self for wisdom instead of God. Now, I always refer to Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 to 27 for the seven-year tribulation. The reason for the seven-year tribulation I really want to get into explains it in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Daniel has just went through explaining all the, the sins of the nation of Israel through his prayer of why they deserve punishment and asking God for his mercy and how his people's not asking for God's mercy and not asking uh, to pay for their iniquities. And Daniel's praying for them, and then Gabriel comes up and, and speaks to him and gives him the uh, verses 24 through 27, and gives him clarity. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy seed to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and anoint the most holy. This is strictly for the Jewish people. Know therefore and understand that from going forth to the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The streets shall be built again and the wall even in tribulous times. And it talks about the walls roll around the Temple Mount. That whole area has got to be built up. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people, the prince that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be as a flood. And the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and desolation, I'm sorry, the sacrifice and the oblation to cease for the overspreading of abominations. He shall make it desolate, and even unto the consummation, that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So I want to give an understanding of end time ministries. Job foresaw powerful ministries in the end times. This is during the seven year tribulation. That uh, I just gave you the reason for the seven-year tribulation, and I'm going to explain what Joel talks about this great ministry that's going on taking place. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 through 29. And shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall bring dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit at the decree of so after the pre-tribulation rapture, the church filled with the Holy Spirit is gone, comes the time of chaos. Now, before I get into that, I'm going to use Amos and explain uh, this period of time. A lot of times there's people who claim to be modern-day prophets today. I don't believe many of them because there's no reason for them. Uh, we have the, whole, the, the Word of God. We have the Bible, all right? So we don't need a prophet what, what's a prophet going to do? The, the Bible is full of prophecy. It tells us the end times. That's the book of Revelation. It's the book of revealing. Uh, now, look at other thing. Look at how, uh, look at a lot of my comments in my, my videos, how people argue and complain. We're, this is during a time where we do have the Holy Spirit on here for guidance. We have having for us to guide us in many things. And look at all the confusion now. So just think about how people argue within supposed to be the brothers of Christ, which the true body of Christ don't argue. The born again know, and they have the discernment. It's those that claim to be Christians that aren't, that argue and do stuff and are worldly. And if you show them truth, that's how can they, 
They get very uh, aggressive and things like that. Why? Because they don't want to admit what they're doing wrong. Or a lot of times they'll get angry and see why you're happy or you're talking about stuff and you see things different from them. Who are you to, you know, and then a lot of times I'll have people come up with verses and, well, you're wrong. Your sermon's wrong. You need to, you're wrong on this. And they'll show you uh, scripture, but they twist the scriptures and then claim I'm twi twisting scriptures. It happens a lot. It's expected. So after tribulation, pre-tribulation rapture and a church filled with the Holy Spirit is gone comes a time of chaos. So there's a gap of time. People keep thinking, well, that do believe in pre-tribulation rapture, that's going to go right into seven-year tribulation. There's a gap of time, space. That's during a time where we have the Bema seat up in heaven in front of Jesus, where uh, we get our rewards. You know, uh, wood, hay, and stubble means you'll, you'll burn uh, smoke when you step in the fire. And this is not a fire that burns. It's just you step in the fire and you have smoke or you have a bright glow, which is precious gems and jewels, represents that, meaning that we're, we we we're in heaven. All right, we we have we're we're with God for eternity, but we we have rewards, and this is where you have a chance to get rewards or not. I understand those people that go through the seven year tribulation, which I'm going to read about in a minute, and make it through all that, they don't get rewards. We do. They're not worthy of rewards. Yeah, they they some of those will be martyred, and they go through a lot uh, to be saved. But they didn't have the gift of grace. They didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost like we do. I mean, they, they have some teachings, and I'll explain where that comes out. from the, And it does come from the Holy Spirit during that time. Uh, but we have the opportunity for rewards. They do not. Amos chapter 8, verses 1 through 14. It's talking about future time that's not happened yet. Thus hath the Lord God showed me, and, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. As the songs of the temple shall be howlings in a day, saith the Lord God, there shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye, that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor lamb to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat? making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse, refuse of the wheat. The Lord hath sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of the, their works. Shall not the Lord tremble for this and every one mourn that dwelt in therein? And it shall rise up folly as a flood, and shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cause the sun to go down at the noon, and I will darken the earth in a clear day. And I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentations. And I will bring a sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only sun, the morning uh, of an only sun, and the end thereof a bitter day. Behold, days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, shall not find it. And that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria say, Thy, O God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth, even they shall fail and never rise up again. So there comes a period of time where not even the scriptures can be found. This is a time of chaos, a time of darkness. I talked about the beam of seat happening up in heaven at this time for us, for the body of Christ, for here on earth. It's it's going to be dark like it's never been. The sun's not going to shine. The God's going to you know shorten the days. Many times I talked about shortening the days because if you didn't later, the elect won't won't live through it because of all the uh, torture and things that are going to happen to him and the killings and beheadings and everything else. Uh, so they can't find the word of God. Why? Because the church is gone. After we leave mass destruction worldwide, and those come against uh, Israel, the law are destroyed. So it's going to affect everything. So I, I believe it's going to be nuclear. A lot of nuclear things are going to happen. You've already seen an example of this weekend where Iran for the first time attacked Israel like they did instead of just through their proxies. 
Like I said, there's enough missiles in Hezbollah to really do the damage. So we'll see how things play out. It's just, it's just a matter of time. It's one day closer. But this is a time before the seven-year tribulation. How do I know this? Because we know three things during the seven-year tribulation, which I'm about to speak about. The 144,000 Jewish men that will be out evangelizing. The two witnesses will be at the Temple Mount for the first three and a half years uh, prophesying. And then you'll have the, an angel supernaturally the whole seven years flying around uh, speaking about the gospel. Because the gospel will be, it, gospel is not taught. Oh, I had one gentleman attacking my channel he's, many times. He just did 10 comments to, uh, on one video yesterday uh, saying things like, the gospel has been taught everywhere. How I was wrong. The gospel has not been taught everywhere. Uh, I've been to more than one third world country. Uh, I've met, I have people I know in the ministry, they evangelize. I met people that was going over uh, years ago that were going over in the Middle East. Um, no, people, not even close. Not everybody's got a, a, a computer in their, their house. I mean, Internet's not, it's all over the world, but it's not everywhere all over the world. Uh, so yes, there's there's a lot uh, people that do not have not even heard, not even read a Bible. So that that will take place. They will get the word. I understand this time of darkness. It talks about there. No one gets the word that there's no uh, during a time of gap. They can't find the word. They can't find the scripture. They can't find anybody preaching because the church will be gone. So and those left behind. You know, they'd be searching. That's, that's another way to look at, you know, when I talk about Second Thessalonians, when I talk about people left behind in the great delusion by God, since it's delusion himself, those people don't know they're deluded. So they're not they're not looking for God. 144,000 Jewish men evangelize. They are given gifts of the Spirit. So yes, this would be from at the point from the Holy Ghost at this point. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1, 4, through 11. Now there are diversities of gifts that the, but the same spirit. And there are diversities of ministrations but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another faith by the same spirit. To another gifts of the healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one and the same self spirit, dividing every man severely as he will. So there's going to be a great advantage from the history of this world during the seven year tribulation. You notice that more people come to God through persecution, tribulation than any other time. And that's because you have cares of the world. When you have prosperity and, and things like that, that's not good. And that's the reason why it's so hard for a rich man to come to God. Because they got everything. The flesh the flesh is fed. You know, a rich man has many things to feed the flesh, feed the flesh and, and doesn't do without. Uh, that's one thing, like I've talked before about my son, when I've been spent almost two years in the desert uh, fighting a war. But the thing is, I, I appreciate water. I got over here on the side here, I got four bottles of water I'll drink tonight. There ain't no problem about me drinking water. I spent too much time in the heat, you know, and so uh, things like that. You learn to appreciate. There are times when I've been without food, and it, I don't look at being an old guy right now, but there are times I have been. Uh, there are times in survival training. I remember one time I was taken out of the field for a little bit because I lost so much weight. It's kind of hard to believe that for me at one point. They got after me. For being too thin, but that was when I was overseas uh, in jungle survival training. The great multitude out of the seven year tribulation. I'll end with this Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and Unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne, about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, 
What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they that which came out of great tribulation, and have washed the robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in the temple. And he sitteth on the throne, and shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun of light on them any more heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them excuse me, unto the living found, fountains of waters, and shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So they forever will be with God. Um, so hopefully this gives you understanding. A lot of people, you know, when the Holy Spirit goes up, like I said, there'll be a time of chaos. The Holy Spirit will not be here on earth for nobody for a period of time. There won't even be no prophesying or anything like that. But later, like Joel talked about, there is prophesying and there is uh, scripture being shown. That is during the seven year tribulation. And there are gifts from the Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit has indwelled us uh, after Christ when he died on the cross. He gave us the Holy Spirit inside us. But that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit didn't do things in the Old Testament, because that's the way it's going to be. It's going to be, if you want reference to the seven-year tribulation, look at the Old Testament, how the, how they became saved, or in ways there, compared to what's going to be. Now, understand, most of them will be martyred. Many will be, be martyred. And uh, those that aren't martyred, you know, if they endure to the end, they're fine. But, you know, would you say, well, John, if someone's killed... Uh, if they're not martyred, uh, say they're somewhere and a disaster happens, uh, they're killed by earthquake, and all sorts of things are happen. So they're not martyred, so they're going to go to heaven. They don't have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. So I, I, that's where I would look at and say, if you call on God, He's there for you. So I don't know. Uh, that's where that would be a, a great area in the scripture because I would make the statement that uh, if someone's uh, in a seven year tribulation, they're coming to know God and they are killed. That would be like, well, they're not martyred and uh, they didn't endure to the end. So that's only two that come out of there. And that's what say I would be like. And that's where I get people because they're like, why do you come up with these things? I just, that's the way I think of things. Uh, I would have to say no. There's not an indwelling of the Holy Ghost. And uh, if that person calls on the Lord, the Lord helps them, he would protect them until they're, you know, yeah, maybe martyred. Uh, there's been different ways of being martyred. Stephen was the first one martyred. He was stoned for speaking against the Sahedrin. So a person can be up there and, uh, like they're not taking the mark of the beast, uh, then they're killed. That's that's a martyr because they didn't take the mark of the beast. You understand what I'm saying? I, I'll be the only one to confuse people. In that aspect, as I rationalize it out, try to, to the word, um, a person who refuses to be take the mark of the beast during that time frame, then they're instantly killed afterwards. That's a martyr. They immediately go to God. They made that choice. They pick God over Satan. So there, there's different aspects to it. So uh, before I say more, confuse my own self. <laughs> but uh, the Holy Spirit, will, there'll be gifts of the Holy Spirit given, like to the 144,000 men that go out and evangelize and uh, be able to uh, speak. And then Joel prophesied about uh, the sons and daughters will be able to prophesy and, and and that comes from God. So there, there'll be gifts given at that point. But that gap of time, it'd be the only time on earth that there's there's nothing of Scripture or nothing. Now, beforehand, you had prophets, and the prophets spoke. So they were getting the word that way. Well, you're not you're in that gap of time. You're not going to even have that. They're looking for something. They can't find it. It's not there. Now, if someone dies during that gap of time, they go to hell. So they don't they don't have anything there. So better to come to know God now and go up to pre tribulation rapture. But many are damned. So and then you say, well, that's harsh. No, because they said they they lived the world more and they live live for the world. So they live for the flesh. 
living by the flesh means they, they get their knowledge by the flesh. They don't get their knowledge by the Holy Ghost. It's totally different. I hope this is, gives some uplifting. I know there's going to be a lot of comments on this one. And uh, as I say, I'm, I'm learning as I go. Uh, you know, I, I turned 59 this month. but it's still, it's still a lot I'm learning. Uh, we are children. We are children of God. So we're even so someone's a mature, the meat of the scriptures does not mean they're still learning. That's what it's about. No one has all the correct answers. But God gives us enough to get us saved. He gets us enough to help others. I did a video, Complete Rapture Doctrine in Scriptures. I recommend going to that because that's probably my most thorough video on the many raptures in the Bible. There's 13 biblical raptures according to scriptures. I go very detailed about that. A lot of people want to argue with me about that. Those probably don't even look at this, don't even look at the, that video. So that you know, like the man that looked at my video the other day for four minutes and three seconds and said I was so bad and all this and that. So uh, that's how some people are. And for that, they don't have the sermon, and they they they're lost. And that's that's where we're at right now. That's why I make these videos to, to try to give understanding to people. And these last minutes to be a watchman on the wall and to warn people and uplift people, uplift them, uh, but to, to warn them, straighten up, because this is it. It's our last moments on earth, and uh, it's getting darker every day. And it's not going to get lighter. It's just going to keep getting darker. God bless you.